In the 1950s and 60s, our streets got full of cars. This concerned a lot of scientists. The concern was in terms of health, but also our public life, how we interact, how we exchange and how we gather together. So they started to observe the traffic, its impacts on our health. They conducted uh, research on how the pollution was increasing or how the noise was affecting us. But it took another 20 years until the city of Vienna decided with a pop-up action, which was called Weihnachtskorso, to try out how a fully pedestrian street could work. The trial was such a success that the inner city has a, a very long pedestrian street going across the city center. Hello, my name is Bahan Onasia. I'm an architect and honestly, I don't want to wait 20, 30, 40 years for any change to happen. I believe we need the change now. I believe we need to improve our places now. Here comes the collective collaborative work um, handy. We believe that every citizen can support each other in such kind of transformations. We can make our surrounding much more nicer, welcoming and safe and healthier. The built environment is, of course, a conglomeration of different actions, different time periods. It also shows us how, how our society works, what we prioritize. If you are not happy with the way how our built environment, our public spaces work, then you have the chance to do something about it. I, as an architect, had to think about for whom I do want to work. I had the option to deal with the traffic and parking problems of different cities and towns and villages and find creative solutions for, the, uh, for their uh, transport problem. Or I had the chance to, talk, uh, to do something for people to make their living, acting and meeting places more valuable and welcoming. In the right picture, we see how a city can just add a terrace to an existing road uh, stretch and create a place to meet for a lot of neighbors and passers-by. In this example, a shop owner wanted that the friend in the wheelchair visits him. So he built a ramp with Legos. This kind of interventions make our life much more easier, inclusive, and have a great impact on our uh, interactions. Such small scale actions can be used for larger purposes too. Such interventions can happen everywhere where we can have an excess. That might be a street, that might be a place, a parking lot, that might be a university yard. We have examples of open streets, play streets, improve a block. The parking day allows us to use the parking lots differently. We can just uh, highlight the intersections and repair streets with uh, tactical urbanism. We can create pop-up parks. We can use uh, voids and reclaim them. We can use uh, vegetation with weed bombing and we can make places which are normally avoided like this area under, underneath a bridge with just some color and some furniture. In future with uh, interruptions like health crisis and financial crises, but also climate crisis, we have to be reactive. We have to act much more quicker. Therefore, knowing how to do those uh, interventions is very important for the flexibility of our society. In those challenges, we might need to think temporary and multifunctional. We might not have the budget or the place for a permanent in installation, but how about 
creating some furniture, which can be a stage for performance, but also a table for a neighborhood dinner. We also have to think multifunctional in terms of the team members who do the intervention. Every person in our society can be a valuable contributor. Here we see in the school of uh, Herzlag in Oslo how Nabalax Hagar is guiding students uh, who never built any furniture before, uh, how they can do their own pop-up furniture for any kind of intervention, the important four layers are the target intervention, space, and the impact. The target of an intervention should be to increase the quality for everyone, but you have to define for which group of person you are working in this specific case, in this specific place. The intervention has to be appropriate to the situation, to the location. The preparation of the intervention shouldn't take too much time because you don't pay people. So they want to have quick results. You have to implement and measure the results, but also the process. You have to write scripts, you have to uh, write reports and by scripting and reporting, you can make the intervention repeatable for others. You have to choose an accessible space. And in best case, you do things which are allowed in this space. But you should make your intervention visible and feelable. The most important part of a public intervention is to measure and to capture the impact. You want to tell the story, how things changed, how the place was perceived differently. Those elements will give you enough material to pursue further change in your built environment. In summary, whatever you do, do it quickly, do it light and do it cheap and do it together with all your fellows. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish you all the best for your tactical urbanism endeavors. See you next time.